Hello, welcome to The Treasure Fox. My name is Wendy. I sell vintage and contemporary jewelry and accessories. Uh, hello to anyone new uh, visiting. I've been, uh, I started this channel about uh, two months or so ago. Um, I'm trying to post weekly, but we've been really busy the last couple weeks planning for a book sale here and an estate sale. So just rather inundated and, and kind of <laughs> haven't had as much time to focus on other things. Um, so yesterday I kind of needed a break and I went on like a, a shopping goodwill like estate sale binge and it's funny I went to three estate sales and goodwill found nothing <laughs> and then I stopped into um, this really great uh, sort of thrift store consignment store in the area and I've gotten some really great pieces from them in the past but it's kind of hit or miss because I never know when the jewelry's coming in um, it's something where I could visit every day um, but you know honestly I just kind of go in like once or twice a month and you know if I find something great if I don't um, but yesterday was kind of the jackpot <laughs> um, I found some really great pieces they had just gotten in a collection from somebody and so it was all like just I think had been put out either that morning or maybe the day before and so I grabbed a bunch of pieces um, so let me show you what I found. There was some other stuff in the store that I'd seen before, so some of it was not part of her collection. Um, so I'll start with some of the pieces that have been there. Um, I've seen these before and I just decided to pick them up this time around. Um, they are Sawarski um, blue enamel uh, gold plated uh, earrings with a sort of planet stars theme. Um, there's actually a matching brooch, which they didn't have, but it's really cute too. Might be a little bit too much to wear altogether. Um, but because they were on the rack card bra uh, brand new, I decided not to pass them up this time around. Um, so yeah, got those. And then this KJL um, enamel bangle. It's black enamel set with gold stars and uh, clear crystals, um, rhinestones, but there is one missing, so I will need to fix that. Otherwise, it's in excellent condition. Um, and none of this stuff is listed. Um, a few things need some light repairs and other stuff I'll try and list uh, this week. Um, one of the other, two other pieces I found that weren't part of what uh, was this woman's collection is this Gerard Yaska piece. Um, so this is a really fun butterfly pendant necklace and I'll try and show you the whole thing there and Gerard Yaska is a New York City based jewelry designer he's been designing for I think over 30 years uh, he's been on the board of directors at the CFDA um, he was nominated for accessory designer of the year in 2005 and he has a really strong point of view uses lots of different types of materials and has a lot of different types of inspiration for his collection so I think they're very um, very different. They're not um, um, very similar looking, whereas some designers, you know, they have a very similar look from collection to collection. Um, so anyway, I just love this piece. It was fun. And then um, just in case you're on the lookout or see, it's usually just signed Yaska on the back. So Y-O-S-C-A. Um, yeah. So that piece. And then also um, these appeared to be new. <coughs> excuse me, the throat's a little bit scratchy, um, were these Richard Keir uh, earrings. And I hadn't seen them before, but they weren't part of, I think, the collection that had been just dropped off. Um, and I wasn't familiar with Richard Keir. Um, and one of the things I want to do on this channel is share as much jewelry, history, and knowledge that I know or I find, and also from people in the comments as well, share what you know about uh, different designers, um, because I really kind of want it to be a resource for the history and knowledge behind the designers and the pieces they're creating. Um, so Richard Keir was a uh, based in Dallas, Texas, and he was designing in the 1980s. Um, he, didn't, he designed a lot of um, blingy style rhinestone statement earrings and jewelry. I think his stuff was sold in Saks Fifth Avenue um, and other places. And he designed a special adhesive, which allowed you to really place um, rhinestones on more rounded surfaces. And um, I wasn't familiar when I found his earrings with him. But one of the reasons I bought them too, besides being really cool looking, was I saw this plate in the back kind of Miriam Haskell style, these like oval plates. And usually, you know, a lot of people will stamp their jewelry. Um, but when someone does a, a separate plate like that, I kind of feel like it's like a little bit higher end, uh, 
more uh, kind of stands out to me sometimes with jewelry. Um, and I just thought they're really cool. Um, his jewelry is very collectible. It goes for quite a bit of money, um, especially if you <laughs> have a first dips account, which I don't, can sell for hundreds. Um, so, uh, but one thing actually with this earring is it needs to be fixed is there's two really small Aurora Borealis um, stones missing from that. So this one does need a repair before I list it. So you just need to find those matching really, really small stones there. So, um, and then I'll move on to the collection. I'm not sure who it was, but there were all these new pieces. They were on the countertop and they had told me that those just came in. So it seemed like it was somebody's collection of jewelry and um, they had several great things. Uh, one was this Lisner set. So I think this set is called Feather and it's pink thermos set with these uh, pink rhinestones, silver tone. Um, and in general, I, I, I don't actually pick up a lot of Lisner. Um, I think it's well made and, and nice. Um, it has more of a vintage look. And <laughs> I know they're a vintage costume jewelry designer, but I tend to, even with the vintage I buy, pick things that still has more of a contemporary feel. Uh, so I don't tend to pick up a lot of Lisner, um, but I just love this set and I had to buy it when I saw it. So, um, and it reminded me of flamingos for some reason. <laughs> I know it's not quite the pink color of a flamingo, but I think just the sort of, it just reminded me of flamingos. Um, so yeah, really nice. And this has a, something going on here. It's like thinned out here. So this is going to require a little bit of attention before it's listed. And then the matching bracelet. Um, so yeah, but this is a little loose. So that's going to need to just be tightened because I don't want it to fall off for somebody buying the piece. But again, they're both in really good condition. You know, they have the two little flaws that, or just things that need attention. But otherwise, um, given it's probably around, I don't know. I haven't done any research, maybe 1960s or so. Um, might be a little bit later. Um, somebody may be more familiar with the Lisner thermostat, but that's just kind of my guess. Um, and then there were a couple more pieces. One was this Sorelli piece. Um, and so this is only my second Sorelli piece that I have found. Um, the company was founded by a woman named Lisa Oswald in the 1980s, I think 1983, and she started making her own jewelry. She's still designing today. Um, her daughter is part of the company, and I think she's like either CEO or CFO of the company now. Um, but really nice piece. Um, I think she has an Italian background, so the name inspiration came from the Italian world word for sisters, which I think is Sorel, Sorelli. I'm not Italian. <laughs> Italian pronunciation is probably not the best. So if anybody wants to correct me there. Um, so yeah, and, and funny enough, my sister has staked claim to this necklace. Um, sometimes dangerous showing her the things I find because um, then she's like, ooh, that's really nice. And then of course I have to give it to her. So yeah, she's claimed to this piece. Um, and Sorelli, um, like Richard Keir, Yaska, and these listeners, all, you know, these are all more expensive pieces. So these are all like really good finds. It was a really good morning. <laughs> None of those estate sales or goodwills were yielding anything, but then I kind of hit the jackpot. Um, and then there was this Michael Negrin piece, Mikhail Negrin, sorry. Um, and last December, we were up in Boston, Faneuil Hall Marketplace, and there's this beautiful store um, called McCall Negrin and it's kind of the Victorian style romantic really beautiful I was really I was taking photos because I just love the store design and layout um, and so McCall Negrin has been designing jewelry since the 1980s uh, she's an Israeli based jewelry designer um, and she started in the open market in Tel Aviv selling her jewelry in I think 1988 and then she began to open stores she had like 13 stores in Israel and she had stores kind of around the world as well. Um, but from what I have discovered recently, she ended up closing her business last year. And so, I don't know, we were in um, Boston in December, but the announcement was made last September that she closed her business. So um, I'm not quite sure if the stores were slowly closing after, um, but her jewelry is very collectible. Um, celebrities like Uma Thurman, Nicole Kidman, uh, like her pieces and buy them. So yeah, and this one, this necklace, is marked, let me see, it's marked 925 on the back. 
So if anybody's more familiar with the process, I mean, I know it would be a plating. I don't, I think of Vermeer as more of a thinner kind of application. So obviously she wanted that kind of Victorian look to it. So she wanted more of the brass, um, but it's kind of interesting that she did this over silver. So um, if anybody has more information on that or is familiar more with Mikhail Negrin's pieces, because the other one I'm gonna show you is also her piece, but it's not 925. So another really lovely um, kind of yellow enamel set with red rhinestones, really cute piece. And this is a slightly different signature. It's a script font, um, a Cal Negrin, whereas this had its own little hang tag, little oval tag there. Um, so there, Ooh, let's show, see if you can see that. Um, yeah. So those are all the pieces I had got at that one location. Um, then later in the day, and I don't normally do this much shopping, I really needed to decompress. Um, I stopped at another Goodwill. I had to run to our Walmart and there's a Goodwill over in that direction. And I picked up this Carol Lee brooch. Um, so that is silver tone set with clear rhinestones. I guess it's kind of like a bow. It's kind of funny because I know this has more of a vintage look and I've just been saying all that stuff about Lisner. Um, but you know, I tend to pick up Carol Lee when I see it. Um, yes, I do like vintage looking pieces. I think sometimes to me, Lisner just has a more a dated look to him and that's why I don't necessarily gravitate towards them even though they have really nice jewelry. Um, so, and then I found this, let's see, um, it's gonna be hard to show on camera, but this is an Echo silk scarf made of colorful umbrellas. It's really, really pretty. It's in excellent condition. It's wrinkly because I did wash it and I have not had a chance to iron it. Um, but yeah, I, I sell like a lot of silk scarves and I pick up a lot of scarves. I have more scarves uh, that I have not listed than I, <laughs> than I have online. I have a backlog of scarves. And then the last pieces I picked up, uh, these are the same, so I'll just say I only need to show you one of them, is this Lennox trinket box called Partridge in a Pear Tree. And because the holidays are coming up, I just thought this was really cute. And it has the 12 days of Christmas going around the rim. So really cute, the uh, three French hens, two turtle doves. Yeah, so really, really cute. And um, I used to have a trinket dish problem. <laughs> when I started selling jewelry, I just picked up trinket dishes and boxes everywhere. And they don't have the highest resale value. It kind of depends on the maker. Um, I still pick them up, but it's just, you know, it becomes like, is it worth it to me? But I love these. Um, I did sell a Royal Crown Derby trinket box for like 125, you know, within the last year or so. And that was a really special find because it, I hadn't been able to find one ever listed like online at all. Um, but in general, um, I'll only pick up certain ones when I see them, even though I love them because I just have, I would have too many here. <laughs> So anyway, um, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to comment below. Let me know any more details you may have on any of these designers, um, any questions or comments you just have on the jewelry. Um, and one of the main things too that I wanna share with this in this channel is really jewelry history, like behind the designers, like more information about them. And there's only so much I can research and find. So any knowledge you have, I just kind of wanna create a whole sort of channel two around the, the makers behind the jewelry. Um, that's one of my inspirations and I can't always readily find some information. Sometimes you can find like obviously Monet, Trafari, there's so much information, but there's so many other designers out there where you can literally find like a paragraph or a sentence and it's like, okay. <laughs> so Richard Keir, I was really piecing stuff together from various different resources. And if I dig more, I'm sure I'd find other things, but it's sometimes just hard to find certain information. Um, but anyway, uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, trying to post videos weekly. There may be a little bit of a hiatus in the next couple of weeks, but I'll try and get videos up. Um, so if you're enjoying the videos, please hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Okay, thanks, bye.